Hey guys, welcome back to ML Art and Design. So what we're gonna do uh, in this video is a skin tone tutorial. So I'm gonna show you uh, a couple of different approaches on skin tones that are, are available out here on all these different statues. But what we wanna try to go with more is of a hyper-realistic uh, finish when we get to the conclusion of this paint app. So hyper-realistic meaning as close to uh, human skin tone as possible. Uh, to me, the bar is set by Hot Toys, and there are some other private custom painters that are dope, so that's what I really want to achieve. So some examples of skin tones. We have the Superman Premium Format Head from Sideshow Collectibles. Um, very safe paint app. Um, very uh, well executed in terms of attention to detail, like with the hairline here and nice clean paint app. They use decals for the eyes. I hand paint my eyes, but that's neither here nor there. If you like decals, you like decals. Um, but this is a more beige, yellow kind of um, foundation with then the shadowing done in like a rosy peach color. The lips are well executed. And um, boom, like I said, that's real safe. They uh, mass produce these, so they can't go wrong with that. Um, next is a custom portrait of a Magneto, Marvel vs. Capcom statue. Um, this obviously has uh, some flaws. Um, not everything on it is desirable um, to my liking, so I'm going to be repainting this as well. But out the gate, let's analyze what we have. First thing you can see is all the overspray onto the white hair. Um, I believe that it was done on purpose because as you can see, it's everywhere. It's not like they missed it in a certain spot. Um, it's missed it everywhere. I don't really like that, but you know, I will be correcting it as I said. Next thing that we can see is the harshness of the shadowing in contrast to the skin tone. Over here is more of what I would, you know, have liked. It's it's subtle and it transitions nicely, but then when you have these deep brown, um, you know, areas, uh, it just looks like it was rushed, you know, in all honesty. And, um, you know, it wasn't really given the love, the attention to detail. It was just like, let's make, let's get this out here and boom, boom, boom. So the portrait is nice, but with a better paint app, I think we could take it to another level. This is a work in progress that I'm doing, and this is what the ultimate uh, goal of what I would like to get the Kylo Ren uh, portrait on would be this. When I say hyper-realistic, well, first of all, this is Tony Stark, um, and it's from the uh, comic cat that's holding the flag. So. When I say hyper-realistic, this is what I mean. A skin tone where it's nice and balanced. It's um, not so perfect. You see some spotting. You see some... Um, if it looks like, like skin, like actual skin. Um, there's a speckling technique which is done, and it ties everything together. Um, obviously... There's still some work to do on this. The lips are rosy. That's just the base. I got to get that lightened up. Do the eyes. And once I do the facial hair, and the hairline and all that stuff, everything will tie in. But this is what I'm trying to say. So when I say hyper-realistic, this is what I mean. Um, I still have a lot to learn, but this is where I'm trying to go and build to get it up to a uh, hot toy level, which is what I think is the bar. So we'll be doing this on... Kylo and hopefully you know we can achieve a nice nice skin tone and I'll bring you guys along for the actual journey so let's go all right guys so to start off I'm a hands-on guy I, I use my hands on the pieces I don't have all these little sticks that I pl you know plug in and hold from a distance and turn you know these are quarter scale pieces they're they're heavy 
So I, I, I tend to hold them. I'm doing the skin tone, so I'm gonna just be obviously grabbing it where the head is at. I'm not gonna be putting my hands here as I paint. Um, I've loaded my my color that I mixed. Um, it's pretty pretty loose. Um, I loaded it into the airbrush, and um, let's give it a shot here. Now, in order to get the shadows going, I have another mix, which is basically the the mix of skin tone that I did, and you wanna lighten it and darken it, you're just going to add more burnt sienna or add more white to it. So what I do is take my base uh, flesh mix with burnt sienna, and I mix it in, as you can hear it is kind of loose so I just come into a cup and I pour some in of my mix and then I uh, I dilute it with a mix of water 50 50 water with denatured alcohol denatured alcohol I get it at Home Depot clean strip denatured alcohol um, the reason why I do use denatured alcohol is because it allows the paint to dry much more quicker. All right, so it's 50% water and 50% denatured alcohol. So I just take my bottle and I just wanna make sure that I that I mix this until it's really thin. I wanna make sure that it's it comes up on the side here and it comes right back off nice and, nice and thin, all right? Because we don't want to overbuild. We're trying to go, like I said, for a hyper-realistic paint app. So we wanna make sure that this thing is built up in layers so that it looks as natural as possible, okay? All right, so as I paint my shadows, I paint my shadows from underneath. Why? Because nine times out of 10, if you have a cabinet and you have your statue inside, the light source is going to be up top, shining down. So you want to make sure that, you know, everything looks according to, you know, what the eye is going to, to think is normal, right? You don't want to have shadows built on the bridge of the nose if the light source is coming from the top, right? So we're going to go ahead and real nice and light, as you can see, the... The paint is really light. As I get closer, of course, it's gonna be darker, but as I come, and we're gonna build up. We're gonna build nice and light. And this is where we wanna be. So as you can see, the shadows are in, but they're not overwhelming by any means. Um, you wanna make sure that you get into all of your crevices under the nose, under the chin, here I've done, you know, little cheekbone um, areas, left the bridge of the nose and the brow pretty much uh, pronounced as well as the chin, um, hit the sides and underneath of uh, the nose and the actual uh, socket of the eye, and then making sure that you come all around, you know, the hairline and make sure that you get in there. So now that we've established our shadows and we did it subtle we're gonna come in now and work on highlights so what i did was i added white to my flesh mix and i just labeled it light flesh tone as this actor's uh skin tone is very fair so what i've done is uh like i said i'm gonna load this color into the airbrush and i'm gonna come in and hit the highlights
All right, highlights are in. Looks a little bit like a zombie right now, but that's exactly where I want to be. So now I've mixed up uh, another color, which this is more like a like a rose. I want to say like a pink rose, and that was achieved by mixing again the base flex, which is always going to be our go-to with some burnt umber and a touch of red. With our rosy color, we're gonna come on in and rebuild the shadows that we did before. He has this scar right here along his cheek. I'm just gonna go ahead and fill that in while we're on this color. We're gonna take our rosy color Mix it in to some more burnt umber light. Always preserve because you might need to go back to the color, so always preserve. Working light, so we're gonna make this very uh, transparent here. And we're just getting looking for subtle differences because we're gonna like i told you we're gonna build this up in, in, in plenty of uh, steps i don't know if i'm gonna go any darker than this because his skin is so fair um so this might be the darkest that i go in terms of shadows um but we're gonna preserve all right all right so now with our darker color in the gun Let's get to some more shadows. Okay, guys. I'm obviously doing some stuff off camera because it's really tight to be down here. I'm working off to the side and I want you guys to be able to see everything. But see how it built up these shadows already to a point. I don't know if I'll go any, any uh, further than that. I took a small brush and I did go with the last shadow cutter that we did. I went into the scar some with it and also underneath here under the uh, eyelids. I went uh, a little darker because I really want to make it like if he's in real turmoil with with the sick. So I did go a little heavy, as you can see. I just sprayed some there as well. Um, really wanted to get on the sides. Really wanted to get make sure that you cover everything, um, and also come in over here. On the bottom because once you paint this black the skin is really gonna pop against that um, against that trim that's along the neckline there so yeah guys at this point right now I'm gonna go ahead and seal this all right so our next step is going to be to knock all of this back down some um, with our original mix that we did of our colors my base tone flesh diluted uh and reduced pretty much as down as i can take it and then we're going to come back we're going to mist over all of this and knock back down some of the uh the shadowing so let's go ahead and do that
so you can see where the actual skin tone is more now overlaid and um, it does look a little muddy in some areas but remember we wanted that to be dark I wanted it to look like if he's going through some turmoil with the Sith as I said right so what we're gonna do is obviously we're not done we're gonna come back with a little bit more highlight now because his skin is very pale and then we're gonna finish it off with the speckling technique. So let's go do that. Let's regain some of our shadows. Okay, guys, see the difference now? Now, we can see that right here, that just that little, taking your time with that little line that divides those two little lumps of skin there and, and really punches it out, you can tell that there's other structures in the face. It's not just a bland color overall. So always keep that in mind. Over here, that little indentation accentuation right there shows that his brow is a little it's not like a surprise look he has detail to him so just make sure you punch all that stuff out i think we're looking pretty good here guys we're at a very good spot right now i can call this quits like literally i'm probably gonna come back in here a little bit more with this with this color that i have here just to punch that out a little bit more. You see that area? There you go. See the striations now? You can see the striations in the face. Um, here, along this line that comes down, I'll probably come in with a nice brush. Just because some, sometimes you can't see it, but I know it's there. See? Can't see it, but when you turn it, you see it. So, overall... I could just paint in the eyes right now, color the hair black, do the lips, little touch up more on the scar and call it a day. But we're not. We're gonna make this, like I said, we wanna go hyper realistic with it. So I'm going to seal this at this point and then we're going to move forward with the pigmentation of it. So if you're happy and content uh, with this tutorial up to this point, that's a nice that's a nice skin tone right there nice skin tone once this is all colored in black and trimmed up hair and eyes done this is gonna be a hell of a of a display right there but we're gonna push it a little bit more man we're gonna push it more we gotta do all of the moles gotta do the hyper pigmentation on it and see if we could take this to the next level 